watch and learn five steps to installing upper cabinets in your laundry room with French cleats. Hi, my name is Kim with Imagine DIY, where I hope to help you imagine the possibilities with DIYs and crafts. If that sounds like fun, consider subscribing. Now let's just jump right into this project. First, clamp your cleat to the cabinet. Drill a pilot hole with a drill bit smaller than your wood screw. Next, make sure the screw is flush against the wood. I use a larger drill bit as wide as the head of the screw to drill about a 16th to an eighth of an inch deep to countersink the screw. Then drill the wood screw all the way through and repeat. You probably only need two screws, but I wanted three to be on the safe side. You can either buy pre-made French cleats from Home Depot or custom make your own. These are custom made to fit my cabinets. If you'd like to see how to make DIY French cleats, click the card in the corner or check the description below for the link. The important tip here is that your screws are flush or slightly deeper into the cleat. It also doesn't matter if the screw pokes through the other side since it won't be seen or touched. Now you want to lay out your cabinets. Consider how your laundry units open. Is it going to hit? I use my self-leveling laser to find the height that would clear my washer door. Then I mark the height with blue tape for quick reference. Grab the other half of your cleat. Press it into the fixed cleat and mark where the bottom would be on the cabinet. Now measure from the bottom of the cabinet to your line. For a simple math example, let's say it's about 27 inches. Then I measured 27 inches from the blue tape where I marked my minimum height. I recommend having a piece of tape ready because it tastes <laughs> really bad. Using my self-leveling laser, I was able to have my horizontal line while I used my stud finder. Mark the stud, noting the beginning and the end to have an idea of the width of your stud. That's why I love using this stud finder because it shows the width instantly using LEDs. I remeasured the width of my cabinet and marked it to get a good visual of how far I can place my cleat on the wall so it will hit at least one stud. Next, line up your cleat. Make sure it's facing the right way so the cabinet cleat will sit on top of it. Then drill a pilot hole and countersink it. Now you can screw your cleat into the stud. Repeat for the other side. I like to give the cleat some pressure so I can feel that it is secure against the wall. To make your cabinet sit parallel to the wall, you will need a spacer block. There are two ways to mount it. You can mount the block onto the wall, making sure that it will not show from the bottom or sides of your cabinet. Since there is no weight on it, you don't necessarily need to hit a stud. The second way I did for my other cabinet is just to glue the block to the bottom of the cabinet. It's easier and you don't have to make more holes in the wall. I wanted to dry fit my cabinet to make sure it worked and to see how much of a gap I would have against the wall. The cabinets I ordered had unfinished sides. I knew I would have to make a finished sideboard and one large enough to cover the gap the French cleat would create. Measure the width of your cabinet from the front lip to the back of the French cleat. Then measure the height and make note of the thickness your board would need to be. I went to Home Depot to pick up two boards to cut down, one for each cabinet. Mark your dimensions on your board and use a straight edge to create your line. Clamp your board down. Since I didn't have a workhorse, I used the cabinet to prop up the other side of the board, making sure my blade wouldn't hit anything. I used a circular saw to cut out what I needed and repeated the steps for the second board. Lay them out onto your cabinets to make sure everything looks good. I used a generous amount of wood glue to attach the board to the cabinet and set some weight to help press it down. I also filled in any extra gaps and then decided to put clamps on it also. After it dried, I used wood filler to fill any large gaps. And then I sanded the cabinet down before painting but accidentally deleted all the footage. There are many options when it comes to painting cabinets. You can use a roller, hand brush, or a spray gun. If you want to learn how to paint furniture with a roller, you can click the card in the corner. 
There is actually a lot to know about painting with the Wagner paint sprayer. Too much to include in this video. Let me know in the comments if you're interested to see a video tutorial on how to use it. I love the freedom the French cleat gave me to install this by myself. Although Tyler was very nervous and wanted to be on standby in case I needed any help. It was very easy to drop the cabinet into place. For extra security, you can screw the cabinet into the studs to make it a permanent fixture. Now to reinstall the door hardware. I find this little nine volt screw gun handy for small projects. It has this convenient adapter to hold the screw for you as it drills, which was very helpful since I had to use one hand to hold this door up and I screwed it in with my other hand. Here's a glimpse of what it looked like before and here is the fantastic finished product. I am so excited at how it turned out. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this, you can click the card right up here or click here for an entire playlist. And I will see you in the next video.